Hope you're all still awake. Late Night Mega here. And we're still exploring the big huge city of Windia. Wind on. Windin. Windin. Windia. Uh, I did get us back to the Poke Center. There was nothing else really going on in between uh, the the area we were with the hotel and that. So now we're over here. Aruka D was not trying to talk to you. Okay, there's no salesman there. This is another just basic Pokemon. Very well. Anything else here? You're probably a fan of Pierce, then. And there's uh, there's not much here. This is the uh, this is the monorail system. Which can take us to the other parts of the city. The Rose of Rondolins? Okay. So once again, people aren't giving me items. This is a problem. Let's go this direction, explore the right side of the city. Right side, and the east side. Anything over yonder? No. So this side we have the residential area and the park. There are so many houses to go into. So many people that just need help watching Late Night Mega on YouTube here. Don't worry, little girl. We will help you out. There you go. next house these people are talking to each other when they should be watching late night mega on youtube i hear he's a pretty swell guy and we come in here and dang that is one big grievant his tail is bigger than the entire rest of his body that is ridiculous big screens. You need to be watching Late Night Mega on the big screen. There you go. Oh my gosh, look at all these houses. Is someone going to give me something? You, stop watching books, start watching Late Night Mega. You're not even giving me anything. Maybe you don't deserve to watch Late Night Mega. Ooh, a Frozmoth. I'll uh, trade it for Duraludon. I knew I don't have Frozmoth for you. Wait, doesn't that Duraludon... I think that Duraludon comes with his hidden ability, if I'm not mistaken. Which is really good hidden ability for double battles. If you wanted to use Duraludon in doubles. Uh, his hidden ability is called Stalwart. It makes it so moves that redirect attacks or would switch attacks don't affect Duraludon. So things like uh, Follow Me, he can ignore that. Uh, or things like Ally Switch, he can ignore that and he'll still target the, the Pokemon he initially targeted. Hey, we have a battle. Well, that's... More than we've gotten from anyone else. Rotom. Okay, Grass Electric. This is not what Garros wants to be doing. Uh, this is a mistake. This is now a bigger mistake. Will-O-Wisp. 
that's not better. I think the only reason I stayed in is because isn't this thing like level 35 or something? 34? Yeah. But if we're burned, we're not going to kill the thing. If we're missing on uh, 95% accuracy moves, we're not going to kill the thing. Let's go into Cinderace, who can't be burned. Volt Switch. No, don't do that. And there's Rotom Wash. You know, the Rotom, Rotom forms, they've always kind of annoyed me. I've never... Like, I, it's one of those Pokemon, I like using them, but I hate seeing them all the time, and they're super popular and competitive. I kind of would have preferred if the Rotoms weren't in the game. But they're here. I mean, they have they have all these different forms. I like that they have the different typing. They're not all just electric ghost type like they initially started off. That was kind of ridiculous. A freeze dry. Finish off that Rotom. But like the Rotom Wash is water electric type. And there's so many different things the Rotoms can do. Which can make them tough to battle against if you don't know which one you're dealing with. Like they could have trick uh, they could trick like choice scarfs on you or choice specs. They can volt switch around a lot. They get Willow Wisp. And then they get their signature move, they get Discharge as well. So like, Rotom Heat here has Overheat. So it can come out and blast something pretty dang strong with a fire attack. Uh, Rotom Mo gets Leaf Storm. And they've got great stats, pretty much all over, uh, except for physical attack. Their HP is pretty bad too. You gotta, you gotta invest in their HP stat when you're using them. But yeah, they make pretty good defensive Pokemon. Yeah, this is not going to go well for you. This is the Rotom Mo, the Grass Electric type. It's just going to get obliterated by Pyro Ball. They're each kind of based off of appliances. There's, there's more than what you're just seeing here. There's also Rotom Fan, which is Electric Flying. And then there's Rotom Frost, which is Electric Ice. And all the forms have the same base stat distribution, which is actually pretty good. Uh, the basic Rotom form, the light bulb form, is an electric ghost, and it, it has different stat distributions. Like, it's not as defensive as these other ones, but it can be... They can function as physically defensive, specially defensive. They can, uh, they can function offensively. So yeah, they can do like substitute nasty plot. Yeah, they get they get all sorts of stuff. And now we have the Rotom catalog, which this is just a key item that we can use anytime we want to change a Rotom into whichever form we want. Meanwhile, I'll change his channel to Late Night Mega. Help him out there because he helped me out. We finally got something from someone. We had to battle him for it. There's a Halucha on the bookshelf. He's upset at you because you won't let him watch Late Night Mega on YouTube. Don't worry, I solved your dilemma. Now we have a park. Are you guys going to give me anything? Oh, ultimate moves. This makes me think it's... Okay, it's starter. So it's probably like Blast Burn... Uh, basically like the fire-type Hyper Beam that the starters get. And then there's likewise a uh, water one and a grass one. I can't remember the water one's name. I think the grass one's name is Frenzy Plant. I could be wrong on that, too. Grassy Seed. Boost defense on grassy terrain? Interesting. Okay, is there anything here? There's nothing here. This section of the park is a waste. Burn it down, Cinderace. 
Just burn it all down. It's not giving me anything. It's not worth keeping these trees. No. Uh. Alright, where... We have not gone this way yet. What are we going to find this way? There's a there's an item, a nugget. A nugget of information. Lots of park benches that we could sit at for some reason. And trash cans that don't seem like they have anything. We have a, a blob of black sludge. Yeah, I like that. So basically, if you uh, if you give this to just any Pokemon, it's going to... It, it's basically like an inverse leftovers. It will lose... HP every turn instead of gain it back. But if you give it to a poison type Pokemon, it acts like a leftovers. So it's really good for poison types in the competitive meta because, well, when we're on the battle stadium ranked battles, uh, I mean, the rules change like every month. Every, every season they, they swap the rules. But uh, one of the common rules, and I haven't seen them change this one yet, is that each Pokemon can, has to hold a unique item. I mean, you don't have to hold an item, but no two Pokemon can hold the same item is what I'm trying to say. So if you give a Pokemon leftovers, you can't give another Pokemon leftovers. But if you have like a defensive poison type that wants leftovers recovery, you can give them Black Sludge instead, and that will act as a leftovers. Also, in the rare instances that uh, your Pokemon ends up falling to a trick move, like with Rotom, so trick will swap items on each Pokemon. So your opponent will usually what happens is they'll swap like a lagging tail, which will force you to go last every time, or they'll swap a choice item, whether it's choice, usually choice scarf, but sometimes choice specs or uh, choice band. And what that does is it means that you will lock, be locked into uh, a single move. Which is really bad for defensive Pokemon that need to switch up their moves, like between their recovery moves and their status moves and all that. So it's really bad for them. Um, but if you use Trick, you have Black Sludge, they, your opponent uses Trick, well now they get the Black Sludge, and if they're not a Poison type, which they're probably not then they're just going to take gradual damage every turn because of that. So that can be another uh, unique niche for a Black Sludge. Likewise, you could also spend your time tricking your Black Sludge to your opponent to make them take damage, uh, but I think there's better, there's better things you could be tricking. Alright, we'll heal up again, because we did have that battle with the Rotoms. Now, another thing that's going on here is I'm looking at the level differences between the Challenge Cup and the Champion, and there's quite a huge difference. And I'm like, well, this this game hasn't... Like, we're, we're basically ready for the Challenge Cup, because I think that tops out at like level 52 or something. Oh, here we have a bunch of TMs. I need to get a lot of these. I mean, I guess I don't need them all right now. I, I would like the elemental punches though, and that drain punch for sure. Well, we're about to blow all our money on this. Money is actually a little bit easier to come by in this game. Actually, it's a lot easier to come by in this game than uh, other Pokemon games. A bit more on that in a bit. Let me let me finish up the uh, the trick. What was I talking about with the trick and the poison types? I had another thought on that topic, and then we then got distracted by elemental punches. Yeah, whatever. Now I'll, I'll get back to it. So to accumulate money really quickly in this game, or, or really effectively, 
what you can do is once you clear the game. Oh yes, I was talking about the the the, the speaking of clearing the. Haha, <laughs> that jogged my memory. We're talking about the champion in in Challenge Cup. So. I'm kind of guessing that there's going to be some content between the Challenge Cup and fighting the champion. Because I can't imagine that this game... This game has been pretty well balanced as far as, like, leveling has gone. And not been, like, giving us huge level spikes other than the one bakery that almost killed us. You know, killed the Nuzlocke. But uh, other than that, things have been pretty stable. So I feel like there's going to be something between there. At least that's the risk I'm going to be taking very shortly. Because I'm just going to go for the Challenge Cup. I'm not going to level my team up to like 65, I think is where I'd need to be. 65-ish. So, yeah. Uh, but to get money, once you clear the game... You go back to the wild area and the places where there are Pokemon in the dens, instead of giving you 300 watts, those now give you 2,000 watts. And then there's, and then the other minor places that don't have Pokemon in the den that currently only give us 50 watts, well, they each give us 200 now. And so you can just collect a lot of watts a lot quicker. And what you do with your watts is you find a vendor in the wild area and the vendors will switch what they're uh, the, they'll switch what they're selling every day but find one that sells luxury balls they sell luxury balls for a hundred watts each and you just buy a whole bunch of those and then you go to a store in a poke center and you sell them because if you noticed earlier in this video was it this video no last video last video we checked out the poke center uh, we could buy luxury balls for 3,000 polka dollars each. Well, each luxury ball is going to sell for half that price, or 1,500 uh, poke dollars each. So that means every little den that gives you 200 watts is worth 3,000 poke dollars. And the dens that give you the 2,000 watts each, those are worth uh, 30,000? Am I doing math right? 2,000 times 1,500? 2,000 times 15, because that'd be... No, it's not 2,000 times 1,500. Because you could buy two, I'm, I'm bad at doing math on camera. Well, each, each of those ends, you could buy 20. So it's 20 times 1,500, which is 30,000, yeah, so. Each den of 2,000 watts is worth 3,000 poke dollars. That makes things really easy when it, it gives you a pretty good way of accumulating lots of money and transferring your watts into money. Hi, hey, there's Marnie. We have to battle Marnie. So yeah, this is the final Gym Challenger face-off. So basically everyone who completed the Gym Challenge now has to face each other in a tournament style. And so Marnie, be there's another like unnamed challenger. The other, the other two people are Hop and some other unnamed challenger that we haven't met and isn't an important character. Guess who we're going to face after Marnie? Yeah. So it's Marnie, and we have a slightly different uh, track for for her theme, which is pretty cool. It has some crowd cheering in the background of the, the theme. I like it. Although I think I like her normal theme just better. All right, Liveheart is going to nasty plot up. Gyarados is going to proceed to not care. And this is kind of the power of Gyarados. Gyarados is going to make things, like, easy mode here. Oh, you're going to go for a second Nasty Plot. Well, you're greedy. You now have scary amounts of special attack power. we got to fix that. Fortunately, we one-shot the thing after the Dragon Dance. 
Dragon Dance is just a really good move. More Peko. Gyarados does not want anything to do with more Peko. So even though we have our Dragon Dance boost, we're getting out of here. Because I don't, I don't trust Gyarados to necessarily outspeed the thing. I don't know. I should, I should outspeed a more Peko after plus one speed. But I don't know. This is not an EV trained Gyarados, so. Torment. Ah, you're tormenting me. And I don't care. Because you're dead. <laughs> Plus, I can bring the Gyarados out later to intimidate something, drop its attack, and then Dragon Dance up again. Uh, if that's the route I want to go. Ooh, it's Scrofty. I'll bring out my Gyarados for Scrofty. Maybe we will try this dragon dancing again. I like this part of the music, too. One of my favorite music themes in the game I think it's a lot of peoples. Yeah, that crunch didn't do much. You know what? We're going to go for a double dragon dance. Double dragon. <laughs> oh, wait. We're going for triple dragon dance? Okay, I mean, why not? The Scrafty's not doing a lot to me. We're just going to make sure we one-shot everything on this team and outspeed... No! Oh, come on. I don't want to be confused with all this attack power. And I don't want to switch out after all that... After setting all this stuff up. Okay, what do we have to cure confusion? There we go. Gyarados, don't be confused. Scary face, no! Darn it. So now I'm at plus five attack and only plus one speed. You know what? Plus one speed should still be enough. Get out of here with your stat changing scrafty. Yeah, we're just now going to obliterate everything she sends out. Toxicroak, it's dead. It could have dry skin, though. Now we're staying in. Dry skin would actually let it absorb this water attack, so maybe I should use Ice Fang? You're not going to tell me its ability, are you? Yeah, look at that power. Oh, we're Dynamax. Oh, yeah, that's right, because we can Dynamax here. I'm going for the Max Geyser. I guess we're just really hoping that this thing does not have... Yeah, because this isn't in the stadium, so we do get to Dynamax. I'm just really hoping this thing doesn't have dry skin. Oh, darn it. It has dry skin. No! Don't do that. Ah, uh, you're wasting my Dynamax turns. What I wanted to do was set the rain for her final Pokemon, which would probably be Dynamaxing. Now we're spending time doing this. It's going to Sucker Punch, and now we're spending our final Dynamax turn setting Hail. I should just went for this to begin with. Well, it started to hail. Those like rules are still in effect. Uh, 
there's the Grim Snarl. It is a dark fairy type. I like the design of Grim Snarl. I mean, that's exactly what you'd think a dark fairy type would look like. Uh, you know what? We're at plus six attack. We should still be faster than it. This thing Gigantamaxes. It has a special Gigantamax form. I believe its special Gigantamax move has... I think it's a dark version? And I think it has like a 50% chance of putting your opponent to sleep. Might even be more than that. In addition to doing damage. We're not going to find out any of this because we just one-shot the thing with our plus six attack Gyarados. Oh my gosh, that is ridiculous. I told you guys Gyarados was going to be easy mode. Nice amount of money there, too. Which is good, because I spent a ton of money in this episode. Hey, speak for yourself. I didn't lose. That's, that's fine, I guess. Fair enough. And yeah, Hop won his match. Or he's going to win his match. Spoiler alert. We're going to face Hop in the uh, to determine who gets to go on to... Um, we actually go on to the Challenge Cup. Only only one, one of the gym challengers gets to go to the Challenge Cup. Yep, Challenger Hop won. Who didn't see that coming? Alright, I think they fully heal our Pokemon, but we don't have enough time to deal with Hop in this episode. So we will have to contend with him next time. Do they heal? Yeah, they healed up. Okay, good. <laughs>